Welcome to KJV Cafe. Thanks for taking time out of your day to listen. Each episode of the cafe is dedicated to studying the Bible verse by verse from Genesis through Revelation. Your host here at the cafe is Bible teacher Clark Covington. Looks like the coffee is hot and ready, so let's get started. Amen. Glory to God. Welcome to the program. Welcome to the cafe. Clark Covington here. Got some coffee. It's decaffeinated. It still counts. It's black. It's black as a dark night. Amen. And uh, hey, it's tasting good. We're at the cafe. We're ready to go. Ready to dive into God's word. We're in Genesis chapter one, and we've made our way to verse 27. If you don't have Genesis one in front of you, uh, Genesis chapter one has 31 verses. So here we are in chapter, or excuse me, verse 27. We are working our way towards the end of Genesis one. And we are wrapping up the sixth day of creation. And if you've been tuning in, by the way, if you have, thank you. Amen. If you've been tuning in, we've been going through in detail, all that God created and looking at it in, in kind of a, broad perspective, but also looking at it in different layers. Like God created light as in literally it's, you know, sunny out today. It's beautiful day today. Oh, I love the sun. God created that light. And then we start thinking about light as Jesus is the light, right? So we're going through the Bible, multiple layers here. We're on verse 27. And um, before we get to that, we're going to, in the next couple of episodes, go back a little bit uh, and and talk a little more about God creating, and 26 mentions him creating the fowl of the air and cattle and creeping things. Well, we're going to go back and look at the cattle uh, a good bit in the next couple of episodes. But and, and that's actually even not even going back because verse 28 also mentions uh, that God had created everything, gave us dominion over uh, all the fish and, and so forth. So it's not really going back, but either way, don't think I forgot about going into other creations beyond just the fish, which we spent a while talking about. But today here we are in verse 27 of Genesis one, and I'll read it for you. So God created man in his own image in the image of God created. He, him male and female created. He, them. Now that verse is exceptional. Uh, I can't think of how you could put more, um, more information in a, in a shorter sentence. I mean, it's like that, that verse right there has a lot to it. God, he is the creator created man in what, in his own image. And then it clarifies God created man and he created woman, female. He's the one that did it. It, so let's just start with the idea of being created by God in his image. Now, this to me comes to mind uh, in different ministry applications. I mean, if you're, if you're doing something for God, you have to have empathy, right? You have to have some level of love for others because God loves us. And so we are to love others. And when we look at others, it's easy in our flesh to judge them. We're all guilty of this. That's why I can't have Facebook, okay? I'd be on there and someone to have a picture on there. It's oh, what are they doing, right? You know, I can't, I mean, it's just, I have it for work, but I don't have like a personal profile or anything like that anymore. Years ago, I did. My wife first got off uh, and uh, really just convicted me. The Lord convicted me shortly thereafter to delete them all. So I deleted them all. So if you see us on Facebook, that wouldn't be a personal profile. That's just for work, but, um, or for the ministry, but you, you know, maybe you're on Facebook, right? And maybe you see someone, a picture of someone and you judge them. Maybe you say, oh, well, look how tall that person got, or look how big that person got or small, or, oh, look at, look at their outfit or, oh, don't they even have a nicer car to drive? I mean, people just, we are prone to judge others. And yet when we see people that come to the Lord in the ministry, often they are in a very humbled state. 
They have often been brought very low. Man needs to be brought low often before he'll seek God. And that might be for another message, but that's the truth of the matter. The Lord is near. The Bible says Matthew, uh, in the book of Matthew, Jesus with the Beatitudes uh, preaches about how blessed are the poor in spirit, the contrite in heart. So when we are hurt and broken down, that's, that's when we're really, really seeking God. And on the other end of that, when you're in the ministry, you're facing those individuals. It might be easy to try to judge them or try to, in some small way, think that you're better than them. And that's when we have to remind ourselves that that individual is made in the image of God. That individual is made in the image of God. And it is literally, it's like, I've heard it said, one beggar talking to another beggar. We are no different. We all are in desperate need of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And and we're going to look uh, at, at some scripture that deals with being made in the image of God in a little bit. But first, let's just focus on this idea of why did God make us in his image? Poor, rich, popular, uh, introverted and alone, uh, you know, uh, European, Asian, African, uh, fill in the blank, Siberian. I'm trying to think of another place, okay? No matter where we are, you know, water lover, mountain lover, you know, uh, North Carolina, South Carolina. Okay, I'll stop. But, you know, no matter where we are, no matter how opposite we are or similar we are, why is it that we're made in the image of God, all of us? Could it be that God loves us so much that he created us in a form like himself? That God didn't just desire a robot to be made, an army of yes men, if you will, and women, but God desired fellowship when he created us. I believe that. I believe that as you grow close to God and you develop what, what you've heard so many preachers call that personal relationship with Christ, when you grow close to the Lord, what do you find out? That it's a sweet fellowship. You know, in my prayers, I pray serious stuff. I pray I, I pray about uh, questions that I have. I'm very intellectually curious. My mind is always wondering this, this, and this. Uh, and the Lord might put on my heart certain things that help satisfy those curiosities. And sometimes I'll just even crack jokes or something. I mean, it's like a friend. It's like a best friend, but it's better than a best friend. The relationship with God is one where we have a deep fellowship with him. This is illustrated in the Bible when you look at the life of Joseph, right? Who was sold off into slavery by his brothers. Amen. He was he was rejected. He was uh, put down, just like Christ was rejected as Messiah. Joseph is a picture or term or like of Christ. And I know some theologians, quote unquote, they don't want to, they don't like that phrase picture of Christ because it's whatever. You know what I mean? He is similar to Christ in the Bible. And Joseph, when he sees his brothers, he forgives them. He weeps. He has to go behind closed doors. He's weeping so much at seeing them. In fact, we're going to get to Joseph in the book of Genesis. It's quite a bit of the book of Genesis is about Joseph, who's a picture of Christ. And he loves his brothers, amen? And he, he adores his brothers. And he isn't just supplying them with all they need because there's famine in the land. He isn't just blessing them, though he does. He isn't just forgiving them, though he has. He has fellowship with them, amen? So we are made in the image of God, if for no other reason than to be able to have fellowship with God. Like what in the New Testament, when Christ says, look, you're, you're not just a, a servant, you're not just one of mine, you're a friend. We're going to pick up with this idea and get into more specific scripture as soon as we come back from the break. You're listening to KJV Cafe. We encourage you to look us up on your favorite podcast app and subscribe to our channel on YouTube. Now let's get back to some more in-depth Bible study. All right, so here we are back from the break, and I'm going to give you that scripture I mentioned right before the break about how Jesus calls us friends, John 15, 15 through 17. That's John chapter 15, verses 15 through 17. We have the Lord speaking here, henceforth I call, call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth, but I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. These things I command you that ye love one another. Of course, 
Christ is commanding us to love one another as he's loved us. And he's saying, I'm your friend. And he's saying, look, a servant doesn't, the servant doesn't necessarily know all the master's business, right? But if you get into God's word, you know, the Bible says the secret of the Lord are with him. Amen. With him. I'm going to look that verse up so I don't mess it up. The secret of the Lord. It's an excellent verse. Got it. I knew it. Psalm 25, 14. There's a few of them in there, but this one here, the secret of the Lord is with them that fear him and he will show them his covenant. And that word fear means to reverence, right? To respect, uh, to adore, right? It's not like fear, like fear as in, oh, I'm afraid of uh, the monster or I'm afraid of, um, you know, killer bees or something. This is a fear that that deals with a deep reverence. Uh, you know, in high school, I had a coach who was like the greatest coach ever in high school football. And he was kind of like a father figure to me. And he was a mean dude. He had a handlebar mustache, bald head. He could bench press mo- more than most of the players. I mean, it was a mean dude. We feared that guy. And that fear wasn't just like, a oh, we're afraid of him. We respected him. Amen. We respected him. We reverenced him. And guess what? When he spoke, we listened. All the players did, including myself. And I was a very rebellious child. But when that man talked, I said nothing. (laughs) I listened to him. Amen. That is how we are to be. As children of God, we are to not be rebellious, but we are to fear the Lord in that regard, in that reverence. And guess what? When we love him, when we fear him, we have his secret. And what's his secret? That's his word. When we're in his word, I've heard it said many times, the Bible is a progressive revelation. The Christian life is like a progressive revelation of God's plan for you and for mankind. And as we live for the Lord, we're given insights. And therefore, we're no longer servants. Servant would be like somebody that is just told what to do and, and nothing else, right? They're not entitled to anything else. Jesus is saying, I call you friends. And of course, there could be other scriptures about how Jesus will serve us at the marriage supper of the Lamb and so on and so forth. Man, it's just, he's so good. God is so, so good and so loving. And that, I believe, at the very least, is why we're made in the image of God so that we can have fellowship with him. And if he made us not in the image of him, it might have been harder to have fellowship with him. We are not made in the image of um, the bobcat, and you may not have the greatest fellowship with a bobcat. We're just made differently, right? The bobcat doesn't have a mind like we have, intellect like we have, on and on. So while we might have some similarities, the bobcat may eat, we may eat. The bobcat may sleep, we may sleep. We're vastly different, amen? So we can't have fellowship like that with the bobcat, And if God hadn't made us in his own image, we wouldn't be able to have fellowship with him. And that surpasses all socioeconomic status, all education, all everything. So we don't judge others on anything uh, at all. We simply love them to pieces and we let God be the judge. And we see that he made us all in his own image. So some verses on this beyond Genesis 1, 27 uh, we have Colossians 3, 9 through 10, and Paul writing to the church at Colossae, lie not one to another, seeing that you've put off the old man with his deeds and have put on the new man, which is renewed in the knowledge after the image of him that created him. And so when we're in the image of God, that should compel us not to sin. Amen. Not to sin. We shouldn't be living in sin if we're made in the image of God. And let's see another one here. Um, Genesis 9, 6, whoso sheddeth man's blood by man shall his blood be shed for in the image of God made he man. Genesis 9, 6 tells us that when we hurt another, we are hurting someone made in the image of God. If we are to respect our creator, then we have to keep this in mind as we deal with others, not just in hurting them or shedding their blood, but in our everyday conduct, how are we treating others? Are we looking at them as one made in the image of God? Because all humans are made that way. It didn't say some men were made that way or some women were all made that way. Now, many may fall off into abject sin, never ever seek the Lord, that reject his free gift of salvation. And that's a whole other story of what they have to deal with. But they're dealing with God himself. And our job is to try to win them to him by showing them love and sharing the gospel with them and respecting them as people. 
Okay, tune in next time as we get to part two on this message of being made in the image of God. Thank you for listening. Take care. God bless and amen. Thanks for spending time with us today at the cafe. We would love to hear from you. You can email Brother Clark directly at clark at enduringpromise.org. See you again tomorrow. Same time, same place.